Hey folks, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Today is part two of the trailer video tutorial, and today we're in After Effects, and we're gonna be compositing and polishing up our animation from Cinema 4D in the last lesson. So if you haven't seen part one of this tutorial, then uh, definitely go down in the post below, and there should be a link down there. But so let's go ahead and import our sequence that we rendered from Cinema 4D. So here are all of my TIFF sequence images here. And so we're just going to select one, make sure that we have the sequence button checked here, and it's going to tell After Effects that, hey, this is a sequence and not just a pure image that we want to import. So once you hit open, it's going to ask you to interpret the footage. We'll just hit straight unmatted, hit OK. And it's going to import all of the sequences from 0 to 200 here as a sequence in After Effects. And so we can create a new composition by dragging this into the new comp button. So now we just have our animation here. And it looks very, very flat and plain, so hopefully uh, we can see what we can do. By the way, this is straight from the tutorial. This is not my previous example or anything like that. This is the actual project render that we did from the tutorial, so no um, adjustments here. So let's just see what we can do. So first off the bat, let's go ahead and add some uh, color correction, color grading. So I'm going to use Colorista for this example, but feel free to use uh, the Curves effect or your own color correction method here. But the, uh, the basics are essentially the same here. So I'm going to make some room. And basically what I want to do is, um, obviously the background is a little bit too crushed here. So I want to bring up the shadows a little bit. And you can do this with curves or however you want to do it with levels. And I want to add a, kind of this blue color to it. So it's not really pure black. We want some uh, cool blues. I'll do the same with the midtones. Just kind of add some blue to it and raise the midtones a little bit as well. And then I want to increase the highlights to kind of this warm orange color. Just so our text is kind of this orange color. And then in the background, we kind of have um, a cooler background here. I kind of want to create that sci-fi feel. So let's take a look here. If I just turn off a uh, colorista before and after. So I mean, not a huge difference, but we kind of set a tone for our uh, shot here or for our animation. Looking pretty cool. So as you can see, we have this really nice fast movement here and there's no motion blur. And I did that intentionally. You can add motion blur within Cinema 4D, but um, it's a lot faster to do with an After Effects. So for this, you can either use CC Force Motion Blur, which works pretty well, but it's kind of slow and heavy on the render. So I'm going to use Real Smart Motion Blur here by revision. And I'll just drag that onto um, our sequence here. And right off the bat, you can see that we have quite a bit of motion blur, which just really blends things in, sells the effects more, makes it more realistic. And it kind of gets rid of all that imperfection that we had uh, in the texturing and in the lighting and stuff like that. So I'm going to increase the blur amount to 1 so we have more motion blur. And I'll increase the motion sensitivity to 90. So that's looking pretty cool. I want to go ahead and copy this colorista here, delete it, and I want to apply it to an adjustment layer. So adjustment layer, paste it in just so we have uh, more control and separation. So I'll just call this CC. And uh, let's go ahead and tweak some of this a little bit. So pretty subtle, but it does kind of add a tone to our uh, shot here. So now let's go ahead and add some of that ambient lighting, uh, the lens flare on top, just to kind of add some more variation here. So let's go to Layer New, create a solid. And uh, we'll call this uh, Light. And we'll apply optical flares. And uh, we'll just go to the options. So let's just go ahead and use the standard light preset. And we'll select the sun digital. And uh, we'll go in here and uh, we'll try to delete some of these extra junk here. So we'll delete all the irises. We don't want that much kind of in the face here. So just delete some of these. And uh, so I'm going to OK. So let's go ahead and change this to a little warmer color. Hit OK. Hit OK. And so now we have our lens flare here. Let's go ahead and change the blending mode from normal to add, just so we can blend this into our scene. And uh, we'll zoom out here. We'll bring the light way up. We'll uh, decrease the scale. 
something very very subtle like that uh, we'll go into the uh, options and just try to delete some more of this uh, iris here all right so hit okay and so let's go ahead and apply some basic uh, color correction to the lens flare we want to add a curves effect and uh, apply some contrast like that we may even want to scale up the uh, lens flare just a little bit more to maybe 60 percent and then raise it up a little bit we want it to make it kind of an ambient light we don't want it to be obvious that this is a lens flare we want to make it somewhat of a top rim light so now we kind of set the overall tone, but as you can see, we have a very faded out image and it's kind of desaturated. And so we'll go ahead and fix that later. Let's go ahead and create that shine in the original demonstration. So we'll use a shine for that. We probably should have uh, rendered the text and the background as two separate passes. So using a multi-pass with a object buffer, but um, didn't do that in this example, but it should be okay. So we'll apply shine to our background text and we'll change to add and well we'll go ahead and animate this first but let's go ahead and change the colors from kind of this red to a uh, orange warm orange and then uh, change the midtones and I will go ahead and uh, tweak this a little bit and what I want to do is I want to kind of burst the light right around here right when it right before it comes into place so I want to burst it out here so let's just uh, increase the light range a little bit increase the boost light and we'll hit a keyframe for the ray length the boost light as well as the shine opacity down here and we'll hit U on the keyboard we'll move forward and I kind of want it to start around here so we'll set it to maybe a uh, lower value maybe perhaps four maybe uh, four as well and uh, set the shine opacity to 100 here so uh, hit a keyframe just for consistency sake so our text is going to come in and it's really going to burst right around here and then it's going to slowly fade away so we'll set the ray length back to zero boost light to zero as well as the uh, shine opacity to zero like that and maybe we can easy ease these keyframes here and just do a quick RAM preview see how it looks like so we gotta just tweak some of these keyframes a little bit and I think I want to make the uh, the kind of explosion of light just a little bit brighter so maybe 15 here um, I guess 8 here just have a very nice burst of light. We want to go into the lens flare. It's kind of static right now. So again, we want to make the lens flare very, very subtle as if it's an ambient light. So we want to go ahead and add some random movement to it. So we add a flicker to it, maybe 20 for speed and 20 for amount, just so the lens flare is not just standing still, looking kind of awkward. We also want the lens flare to kind of fade in right around here. So we'll start around here. We'll set the brightness to zero and we'll move forward a little bit set the brightness to 100 hit U on the keyboard and we want to easy ease some of these a little bit so just easy in a little bit and as you can see we kind of have this weird uh, horrible camera move right here so I'm just going to start the camera around right here so just uh, trim it just so we have something like that and I want to go ahead and um, add some contrast, just a little bit more to the light rays. It looks kind of flat still. So we'll go into the shadows here, kind of increase the warmness of it, like that. And so now I think we should uh, do some final color correction. So let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. We'll call this, uh, I guess, uh, CC Final. And we'll apply a curves effect drag it in and uh, we'll apply some contrast and then we can go into the blues again and kind of raise the blues a little bit that and then we want to go into the greens 
and raise the green as well. We kind of wanted to make it kind of a grungy feel to this. Like that, maybe increase the shadows just a little bit. Like that. So if we shut off the uh, first uh, color correction final here and then we shut off the original CC, you can see that we get a big difference here. It looks very flat, very boring. We apply some basic color correction, nothing too fancy. And you can see that makes quite the difference here. And again, I should have rendered the text separately from the background so that we can increase the contrast because still the contrast in the text looks kind of uh, dull here. We could extract it, but I'm just going to leave it as such. And then we can apply some basic letterboxing. So let's just go ahead and create this, uh, I guess, not really professional letterboxing. We'll call it letterboxing. And then we're going to get the rectangle mask tool here. Turn on our title safe. And let's just go ahead and draw a very rough letterboxing mask. Make sure that both sides are somewhat even. And then we'll change the mask from add to subtract. Turn off our title safe. And then we have our, I guess, letterboxing here. So one final thing to kind of blend these in together, uh, make things a little bit less sharp and just kind of uh, add that cinematic grain to it. We're just gonna add a grain pass to it. So let's go ahead and create another new adjustment layer. We'll call this grain. And again, this is just to kind of uh, reduce some of the bandings and the ripples and just kind of add a softness to the whole animation. Just kind of add that grain to make it look less sharp. So we'll add a grain to the adjustment layer, make sure that this grain is underneath the letterbox. And we don't want some grain on our letterboxing. The letterboxing is supposed to be natural, but I guess we kind of created an after effects. So make sure that the letterboxing uh, layer is on top of everything. Add the grain underneath that. We'll change the viewing mode from preview to output. So it's gonna apply the grain to the whole animation here. And then we can go into the intensity here and then change it to maybe about uh, 0.25 just so we have this very nice soft subtle grain to kind of blend things in together a little bit. So it's looking pretty cool. Let's go ahead and fix that glitch in the beginning a little bit. So right around here. We'll just trim that again. Now in the original demonstration I added a few more things just to kind of enhance this a little bit. I added a out of focus effect to this thing so we can apply another new adjustment layer we can call this out of focus and then we can apply it above everything here and then what I did was I applied an out of focus you can use uh, the default lens blur with After Effects so drag that in and I pretty much just blur this whole thing out in the beginning just to kind of soften things up and add some variation of camera movement and uh, camera focusing uh, for this animation here so pretty much it's just a simple blur out blur in so I'm gonna blur it out at 70 percent and I'll just move this forward a little bit we'll move forward a little bit right when we can see our text we want to preserve some of the details we don't want to just blur everything out and then uh, keep it all blurred so we don't see any of that nice texture or detail we want to uh, turn off the blur at around this time here right around here just something very very subtle so we start off with a nice soft image and then we kind of slowly focus into our awesome 3d text that we worked so hard to get to so just something very very subtle in the beginning here I'll, it's easy ease that in and then one final thing I did was create a I guess of a vignette mask to this whole thing here so I'm gonna create a new black solid we'll call this vignette and I want to kind of isolate the whole uh, scene here just to show kind of our text and our light here. So we want to make it seem like that light is pretty much lighting everything. And that's not the case right now. So we want to get the ellipse tool here. And just draw a really rough big mass here. Turn it on. We'll set the mass to subtract. Drag it underneath our letterboxing and our grain. As well as our CC final. And then we'll just feather this thing out a little bit to maybe around, uh, I guess, 200 pixels. We'll hit MM. And then we want to go ahead and increase the expansion 
like that, maybe around 120. And we'll just decrease the opacity very slightly. And that's just going to give us this uh, alone and focused look here. So if I just turn off the uh, vignette here, you can see. Kind of creates a very focused look, an isolated look here. So again, I'm going to do a quick RAM preview. So one final thing we're going to do is we're going to add some smoke. So let's go ahead and go to layer new and create a solid. We'll call this smoke. And this is going to kind of add that more volumetric feel, that more big, large space and mystic feel to our animation. So we'll go ahead and use particular for this. And a particular makes it really easy to create very, very nice smoke simulation. So we'll go into uh, the smoke here and uh, we'll go into the emitter, change it to box. We'll decrease the particles down to around 50 or so. And we'll just increase the emitter size. So we have a very, very large box area. And uh, we'll just position this thing kind of down. And we'll go into the particles here and change the particle type to cloudlet. And we're really going to pump up the size. And then we're going to decrease the opacity very, very low to around 1. And uh, we'll worry about the color a little bit later here. I want to go into the opacity over life. We want it to kind of fade in and then fade out. We want to increase the size just a little bit more. And then we want to go into the emission extras and just uh, turn on the pre-run here. So we want to go ahead and drag the smoke layer uh, underneath or out of focus right above our light here. Turn it back on. And so now it looks kind of crazy. We want to adjust the color of the smoke to kind of match our scene better. So I want to make it kind of this really golden orange color. Very, very dark, very, very subtle. Somewhere around here, we'll hit OK and see what that looks like. We'll just tone down the opacity just a little bit more. And then maybe decrease the size a little bit. Just so we have some very subtle smoke. And then to animate the smoke a little bit, we'll go into the physics, go into the air, and we'll just uh, change the wind speed in X to around uh, 70 or so, just so that the uh, particles will be moving to the right a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and just raise the Y up a little bit. And then we can go to the turbulence field to kind of mess it up, add some randomness. We'll change the effect position by a bit. And let's go ahead and do a quick ramp preview. So pretty cool, I have to say. Um, overall, we took a look at how to apply some nice uh, vignettes and do some basic color correction, color grading, add some smoke for some environment, some ambient lighting, and just overall make the animation look a little bit nicer than the original by blending things in a little bit and just kind of enhancing the overall animation. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this two-part tutorial kind of workflow here where we took things into Cinema 4D, worked in there, and kind of integrated it in After Effects. If you guys liked it, leave me a comment down below. Tell me how you think. Tell me what you think. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know I had a lot of fun making it. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial, guys. My name is Vincent Nguyen. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye, guys.